Yeah, we find her That beautiful girl we've been missing We rather, we wanna have her kissing <laughs> We find her, now we love Say God so, the remix B&B Talk Spice Remix Now if I had a loose like a bad phone connection I'd change my game to get a better reception Sit back, let's start this interaction Don't fight the feelings, just a chain reaction Your heart won't give it the wrong instructions Like my GPS, yes I got the right direction We gotta merge together like a road intersection Last stop is gonna be my love and affection I ain't like the mother deuce, they wanna call you shorty But I'ma call you a beautiful girl I took your picture home, my mama saw it She like, she's a very, very beautiful I wanna put you in my video cause you're so beautiful You're a beautiful girl So when you hear us in your radio, turn up your stereo It's beautiful girl Gotta find a shorty What's worth of the lady A nice but maybe Doesn't look like 40 It's taking a little time I was a saying no signs Any traces of my baby Who's gonna be my baby? Take my time with them to go off my eye. I saw a shot passing by. She's got this very pretty smile. It was right at the pay station. I tried to make a conversation. All in my arms, feeling so tough. I felt the sensation. It's been a while that I've been trying to find a beautiful girl. Now I realize I found me a beauty. She's a model, she's so fine I just wanna take a bite Beautiful girl Smiling eyes are killing her thigh I found me a beautiful girl Body me up, yo, yeah, nah. My wish came true when I saw you, girl God must have blessed me with your beauty, girl Looking so right from your head to your toe Chip like a coke bottle with a smile of a queen My queen to be, you my destiny Got a body of a goddess with your beauty I'm impressed and I'm never in distress Come on over and be mine Things searching for a man they now All the cats keep looking to mine With a sexy walk and a sexy talk She must be from a planet called the sexy world I know I ain't tripping better yet I'm thinking put a ring on the finger We look good together Take your place in my heart With your beauty I'm gonna say That I'll never turn away Who would think I'm in love So the way she smiles at me Just really really makes me weak The way she speaks to me Just really make me go so weak Keep staring in her eyebrows All I get to say is wow well, The beauty has a reason night All I really want in my life Oh yeah It's been a while that I've been trying I found a beautiful girl Fine, fine, brown eyes I found me a beauty Beautiful girl She's my model, she's so fine Presents and gifts, call, call me Santa. Santa. Claws, I make a heartbeat pause. That's my girl, homeboy, not yours. The girl of my dream, she's more than I ever thought. Show me as the gutcher, I think I'm getting punked. She's what I really want, so I'm a go getter. Since I'm a go getter, you know I'm go getter. <laughs> and I will give her the world anything for my beautiful girl. <laughs> Psych.
miss your love That I be missing I miss all your hugs You're touching and kissing me Love on the floor The couch in the kitchen One love enough We done enough Man of prestige. Ha! Now this guy win. <laughs> now you win. Now you win today. Now you win. Now you win. I agree. Man of prestige. Now man you be. I'm so sure some people will be jealous now the way I talk about Ola. But I have I have learned a lot from him. That's why I keep telling you to follow him. If you don't follow man of prestige, now you know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back to Men of Prestige on a day. How's everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Today's Friday. What's going on? Not too how far. How are you doing? D Love, I see you. I see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Do me a favor, hit that like button, share, subscribe, turn up your notifications, let everybody know we're hanging out. We are going to have a big show today. Yes. We have a big show today. Hit that like button, share, subscribe, turn up your notifications so you're notified when we do go live. What's going on, Mo Fresh? Good to see you. She says, hello, MOP. Good evening, Prestige. Ladies and gentlemen, not to D-Love. Shout out to all my sponsors. I appreciate you. All my sponsors. Mo Fresh, of course. Richie, Life with Natu, Adesua, Film Girl, Tima, Show Mama. Gorex Corner, D Love, of course. Oh, hey, you can join our sponsors by simply hitting the, the the join button on the on the platform at any time. Uh, but yes, yes, yes. Uh, also, you can sponsor the show. You know, uh, right now we're up to seventy seven dollars and seventy three cents this month. Our goal is three hundred dollars. Uh, that's from last show, five dollars and twelve cents. You can sponsor the show for as low as 99 cents. Everything adds up. I appreciate you as you do so. This is Man of Prestige. What we do here is we talk about relationships. We extract relationship lessons from trendy topics, particularly from a self-power, social, seduction, attraction, emotional intelligence standpoint. And uh, by the way, you can download the book, our books. Okay, uh, The new book is out. You can download it for free number one redflag.com number one redflag.com and you also get this as a bonus the original book get my marriage back you can get all of that at number one redflag.com and you can also join the behind the scenes conversations at lolaandola.com slash whatsapp anyway like i told you we do have a big show today i have a special guest with me ladies and gentlemen esteemed viewers and cherished members of the prestige family Today, we are honored to have a truly inspiring guest with us. Joining our platform is Omo Lola Festus Adidayo, affectionately known as LFA, a beacon of strength, resilience, and empowerment. LFA is not just a single mother, she's a force in her own right as a professional social worker and mental health therapist. She dedicates her life to making a positive impact on the lives of others. With a, with a heart full of compassion, she hosts the transformative shows, a single again with LFA and Bob, and a mother's burden, raising multicultural children in the United States. Her journey is not just about personal growth, but extends to empowering women, particularly divorced single parents. LFA aspires to create a safe and judgment-free zone within a community within our community, offering support, motivation, and resources to those in need. Without further ado, let's warmly welcome Amolola Festus Adidayo, LFA, as our special guest today on the Prestige family, with the Prestige family. Hello, Miss Lola. Welcome back. I said welcome back, but welcome to our midst. You know, good to have you. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Oh my goodness. That's oh, when awesome. you started reading all those, you know, whatever, whatever, I was like, okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes a bigger deal, huh? I know, right? <laughs> it is a big deal. It is a big thank deal. You for having me on the show. Thank absolutely, you. absolutely. It's my pleasure to have you. It's our pleasure to have you, and we're looking forward to this uh, conversation today. 
all right and uh you see you're getting some love already we we'll greet and welcome you lfa Thank love you. it love it love it love it welcome all right so uh i i am very interested in this conversation for multiple multiple different reasons you know uh some of them are obviously inside of your bio you know but um i also find um the direction that the family unit is going very interesting mm -hmm. I, I really don't think it's stuff that you can judge people about i think it's stuff that we need to look uh very carefully and understand what's going on because i don't think it's a matter of uh i really don't think in general it's a matter of right and wrong i think it is what it is you know so but before we get too much into the conversation if you don't mind i know i did justice with your introduction but we would like to get to know you from you you know uh, tell us a little bit about yourself you know and uh we'd like to get to know you yep um actually i don't know what Allah wants me to say anymore because he really did justice my name is omolola festus Adigayo. legally i still be at the koya but i prefer to go by festus Adigayo. um i'm a single mother i have two wonderful children i am a social work and mental health therapist i i love life i love love I enjoy laughter. You can see I I like laughing, and I I I am motivated to empower, to okay. enrich, to support, and to encourage as many as I come in contact with. You know, either in providing resources, either in providing you know just chipping in on advice. You know even if it's as little as providing direction i want to do it as a steward i want to do it in a way that people can always recall you know I'm like oh wow yeah i met someone that did this that said this or did that and i think the overall for me and that's what gives me joy is empowering people professionally and out of my profession you know, even my children will say that I'm a woman of prayer and I love talking with the Lord a lot. That's something okay. I do every time, even when I'm sitting, even when I'm sleeping. To God be the glory. Honestly, I do that even unconsciously. I just find myself talking with him because I draw my strength from him. Okay. And I know that is where my I my that is my rock. I can't say anything more than that. That's so awesome. Thank you for that accolade. That was really good. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, um, you did mention God a couple of times, and uh, I'm a church boy myself. I don't necessarily consider myself a religious person. Um, again, the direction that society is going uh, is something I find interesting and fascinating, and uh, I think the only solution is to really just be a perpetual student mm -hmm. of what I call the game, you know. Um, we're here, you know, and we have... We are, we are, we're dealt uh, different types of cards individually, at individual level, also as a society, you know. Sometimes those cards are just us. Sometimes they're involving children, you know. And sometimes they're involving, involving even extended family, you know. Uh, some of us are responsible for taking care of uh, uh, overextended, extended family if Especially you are Nigerians or Africans in the diaspora, if you're a Nigerian and you're in the diaspora, <laughs> you know, and uh, even if you want to pretend like, ah, let me just take care of mine, uh, uh, you know, as a person who cares, there's only so much you can be quiet and pretend that people are not going through a lot, and anytime you can lend, uh, give a, a you know a hand to somebody, it, it's yeah. it's a pleasure, but it's not always easy, right? Yeah. So, so with all of all of that being said, you know one of the uh, biggest uh, uh, issues with uh, the family unit in the Western world, uh, either by way of the narrative or the reality, is um, the family unit is not is no longer sustainable the way it was. You know, I, what, I, is, I, what is what is what is your take on this? I think it has always not been sustainable. I think it has always been, if I can use the word manageable. Okay. And 
I just want to kind of reverse back because you started by saying, you know, you start, you, you're aware of what life throws at you. Right. And while you were saying that, I was just, it's just like human development, right? I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll veer off to social work a little bit. That's okay, please. Feel free. You know, um, in the cycle sexual development, there is the um, oral stage, there is the anal stage, there is a failure, there is the genital, and there is the latency stage. All of these stages, you go through all of these stages. When mm -hmm. the stage is complete, then you move to the next stage. And I see that the same thing as in the family unit and as individual. Mm -hmm. I started from being, I was giving birth to, went to elementary, went to high school, went to college, got out of college, started working. Those are stages I went through. And in all of those stages as a girl growing up, and some of this thing I think I discussed in the mother's body some times ago. You're thinking at the back of your mind of this fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to meet my Prince Charming. Oh, he has to be tall. He mm -hmm. has to be handsome. He has to have this. He has to have that. We live in La La Land. But when reality sets in after college and you're dating this guy that doesn't even have a job, that you know doesn't even know how I'm going to get a job mm -hmm. if you were in Nigeria. Fast forward to being in America, you okay, of course you know your future is set. When you get out of college, this is mm -hmm. what I want to do. To a certain, to a certain extent. Yes, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. right? And you know, you, gradually, gradually you're building on it. But mm. you, something we forget to always do, and it's something I wrote down. I wrote it down somewhere to my desk. Mm -hmm. Is like I said, we teach our children to know God. We teach them to go to church. We teach them to pray. We teach them to know how to do everything, but we don't teach them how to be a good wife or a good husband. Mm. We are not modeling it, and I can't mm. fault us because mm. Mm. we deal to others what life deals us, right? I, if I grow up in a household where my parents are always fighting, yelling at each other, there is no love. We don't come together as a family. Mm. You don't expect me to teach my child to be loving, to yeah. be accepting, to be accommodating of others. You know? Yeah. So a child that grows in a household that probably the father is not, avail is not around, always not available, mm. you know, not there. And when he is there, he's a bully. Is a narcissistic yeah. person. Yeah. He is a control freak. He or some parents, some father may just be pessimistic and just don't want to be involved. How do you expect a child like that to love? How do you expect a child like that to know how to care for your own? That's tough. So yeah, so a lot of the things, and even in those days, you hear mothers. I grew up in Nigeria. Mm. I relocated here some years ago. Mm -hmm. You hear mothers saying that. Ah, I'm there because of my children. To your mom, if you want Yes. Yeah. So I am managing the situation. Yeah. Basically, that's what they were doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not even sustainable. Obviously, because if it was sustainable, it would still be here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I am just trying to patch it. I just want my kids to go. I just want them to go. Yeah. Little wonder, even in the Western world, you see elderly couples divorcing themselves. Because all of the kids are in college and they are empty nesters. Empty and nesters. We had mm -hmm. nothing in common from the onset anyway. We just wanted the kids out of the house. Right. Before we move on with our lives. Mm -hmm. Before we start snooping around. Yeah. They, they often don't They often don't declare it, but eventually they start snooping around and yes. they call it growing apart. <laughs> yeah. And people wonder what happened. Uh huh. You know, but um, I, 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 I don't just want to divert and just... Mm -hmm. But I said that the root starts from the home. Yeah. As a mother, as a single mother, mm -hmm. what am I teaching my son? What am I teaching my daughter? Mm. Even if I'm not a single mother, even if I was married, what right. am I teaching them? How do I, because most of the time we pray that, oh, I want them to get married to a good husband. I want them to get married to a good wife. But am I praying that my child and my son should be good wives and good husbands? Yeah, that's that's usually not the focus. So yeah. now I, I I think we have to go back to the drawing board and refocus the way that God wants us to draw it. Yeah. 
I I don't. You said you're a church boy, and I mm -hmm. I respect that, appreciate that, mm -hmm. and of course I I may say I'm a church girl too, but I yeah. think my own church is on a different level. I have a personal okay. relationship with God, so I know Him. Right. That's uh, that's uh, very similar to what I mean by being a. Uh, not 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 uh, when i say i'm not religious not religious is synonymous to having a personal relationship with god in my right. opinion right uh religious religious people tend in my opinion to not have relationship with god yes they just they're just following i will see a lot of them in the churches everywhere they're everywhere they're, they're a majority of, of christians <laughs> yeah 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 they're a majority of christians in my opinion actually you know but I can also respect that because I know this is the power of uh, conditioning. Mm. You know, there's a certain yes, uh, exactly. value that that brings us to society. Majority of people are never going to be critical thinkers. So they need some kind of structure in place. Um, and sometimes the way we get that done is by teaching them a set of quote unquote rules, you know, which go to church, uh, obey your parents, don't steal, yeah, don't lie, do, exactly. love your neighbors. Things but like we're that. Teaching them the yeah. nitty gritty, things that they need to know as children. Yeah, because when it gets down to it, it's not gonna be black and white. Yeah. Right? It's easy Absolutely. to to be raised as a person that doesn't steal and don't steal. That's that's easy. Majority yeah. of people will not steal if they were raised to not steal. But when they get tested in the middle of a relationship, when they get triggered they by somebody steal. talking a certain type of way, yeah, they would still cheat and lie. You see, I, 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 I'm going to, of course, borrow some um, experiences from when I was um, married. Mm -hmm. um, and even now, we raise our kids. And when I say we, I mean me and um, my if I can use the word baby's father, I, right. I don't like using the word baby ex. fathers. Mm -hmm. I don't like using the word ex because I think it's um, kind of disrespectful. Oh wait, 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 wait! Before you go further, that's an that's an interesting one right there. You don't like using the word ex because it's disrespectful to who? To you or to them? Um, it is disrespectful to them. It is disrespectful to me. It is it is disrespectful to the man and. It's funny, I'm going to say this. No matter what happened between us, I will not disrespect him. Um, and that's because I I respect myself. I'm that kind of a person. I won't disrespect you. Right. I just put you in your place. But using the word ex, it's kind of... I don't know. I know a lot of the time people use it. Uh -huh. But it's. I think it's not appropriate in that it is not an ex because whether you are not together or not he's always in your life right the kids are there so he's not ex yeah i see where, I see where you're going with that he's not exiting he's still there but i see where you're going with that yeah the relationship is not together you guys right. are not together but he's still there so he's not an ex Interesting. he's still there until the kids are individually on them their own so he's he's still there there's nothing like an ex I know a lot of the time we use that word, but personally, mm -hmm. I don't think it's um, appropriate. So I'll just use the word my um, baby's father. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I, got, we, I got you. Before you continue, please hold your thought there, right? Um, what I find interesting about that is I tell people here in the Proceed family all the time that that person is going to be there for a long time. You need to manage that relationship the same management of the relationship we told you learn how to do relationship you're gonna to have to do it even after the marriage so i say that here all the time and it's interesting that you're saying that right now that hey this person you want to call them an ex whatever you know do you but they're not in the in the grand scheme of things in reality they're, they're not, not really ex, ex anything right at yeah. least you don't hope you never hope because as long as those children are valid they remain just what that yes. was yes they do yeah. they do yeah. sorry go ahead go ahead with your thoughts so, uh, excuse me back to mm -hmm. what i was saying we you know brought up our kids not to use foul mm -hmm. language you don't use the f word you don't use the s word you don't use the a word you know mm -hmm. all these laws right 
you know. And my daughter told me one day, my daughter is 14. Okay. She came home one day and she was saying something and I will use the word shoot. Like if something happened, I'll be like, shoot, why did I do that? Mm-hmm. You know, or gali, or you mm-hmm. know, like um then, you know, mm-hmm. and my son was like, Mommy, we don't use that word. Mm. And my daughter was like, Yes, mommy. And then she just turned and she said, You know what, mommy? Sometimes I just look at you guys. You told us not to use this word. Well, mm-hmm. a lot of my friends used it in school. A lot of people use it around me. Doesn't right. mean I shouldn't use it when I'm around them. And you know, it made me start researching. And it's funny, I stumbled upon something on Netflix. It's mm-hmm. called The um, Origin of Curse Word. Okay. You know. And I started watching it, but I didn't finish watching it. It was um, Nick, what's his name? Nicholas Cage. Okay. Was hosted. I know that name. Tall yes, guy, right? I yeah. I started watching it, yes, but I didn't finish watching it. And I understood where the word fuck. I don't want to use that word. The mm-hmm. F word. The F word. Mm-hmm. You know, I understood the meaning of where they came from. Mm-hmm. And as part of education, now I know what those words mean. But in what context? Context. Context, yes. And that's the education I give my kids. Yeah. You have to understand a word and know the context mm-hmm. of which you're using it. Absolutely. If I tell you to keep quiet, in what context? It could be an insult. Mm-hmm. And it, it could be, be, I need you to actually be quiet. Yes. <laughs> you know, so in what context am yeah. I using it? So when we are teaching our children, don't steal. In what context? We have to go past the parenting of just dishing out orders. Orders, right. sitting down and explaining the reason why. Mm. I have a nine-year-old that will always ask me, but mommy, why? Even if I tell him the reason, he will stick, but mommy, why? Why that why? Why? Yes. Yeah. So... (laughs) We, we mm-hmm. honestly, we have to eat, and in all of this thing, I, I'm telling you, mm-hmm. having a good marital relationship stems from the home you come from, mm-hmm. your parents, your family, mm-hmm. and you as an individual. The Yorubas we say, about about Koeni, Amantua, about Amantua, 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 yes. So yes. I'm coming from a household. I have my own baggage. You are coming from yours. You have your own baggage. Mm-hmm. And we are kind of coming to form a force. Yeah. Mind you, we came with our baggages. We didn't leave it at the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we never learned how to regulate emotion. We never learned how to effectively communicate. We never learned how to love ourselves, myself, mm. before I can love you as a partner or a spouse, right. never learned how to decentralize things and to mm-hmm. compartmentalize and to bring them all together. We were not taught we were not taught all of those things. No, we were not. We were just dished rules. Yes. <laughs> just a and bunch of rules. God God help you. Look, I grew up in a military home. My mm. dad was a military person, military personnel. You would think my mother was the one that bashed a soldier. Mm. Look, I grew up in my young barracks. I grew up at the Kedja Cantonment. We went to just we went to Enugu. We went everywhere. But if if you know military hospital Yaba very well, we grew, I grew up in that barracks. I spent most of my life in that barracks. No, I'm an Ondo boy. I didn't. I don't know. I don't know Lagos at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> my mom has a shop in the barracks. Okay. If any boy passes through that shops and look and turn twice and to look, look at the girls in his shop. In a shop, you that are in trouble. Collect. Yeah. Oh yes, you are in trouble. <laughs> everybody knows her, and everybody dread her. Hmm. So I grew up with fear. Hmm. Growing up in a house where my mom told you, "Ah, okay, now you started your message. If the boy touch you, you get pregnant." Yes, this is a consistent story with all yes. Nigerian girls growing up. Yes, growing up in a household where all you have to do is just go out to cook. Mm-hmm. You cook, you clean. And you listen. If they say sit, you sit. You don't stand up. There is nothing like, oh, okay, um, 
if you get married, this is how you behave towards your husband. Submission does not mean foolishness. This mm. is what submission actually means. This is how you self-regulate when you're upset. This is what right. you do. There was nothing like that. Mm. Mm. So mm. going into marriage, and I was I was blessed because I had a lot of enlightened people around me, marriage counselors, you know, people that I can look up to relationship wise and all of that. So going into marriage, I was I, I, I was quite prepared, if I can say that. I was quite prepared. However, you know, the person you are marrying to is that person as prepared as you are. That is another question that you need to ask yourself. I am marrying this person. Is this person as prepared as I am? Do we so, come sorry, you said, you said you were prepared. Yes, I would say I was quite prepared for marriage. Was that, because of, was... was that because of mom? No, 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 not because of my mom. Oh, look, most of the things I learned about marriage, I didn't learn from my mom. I learned from my godmother. Hmm. Yes, she was a marriage counselor. Gotcha. And she does counseling and, you know, she advised people a lot. And she has a lot a lot of young girls around her. So we always go to her to tap in a world of knowledge. And we learned a lot from her. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. yeah. So what I know, when I met the person I married, I, I, I was not sure if he knew what I knew. Because we're not on... We were not on the same page. Hmm. You know, we were not on the same page as in, I would say I was kind of more mature and more exposed. And he was kind of in his own way, mature in his own way, but we were not on the same, um, we were not on the same frequency when hmm. it comes to marital maturity, what I know. Um, going into marriage or being being married, so it was on a different frequency, mm. you know. Okay, all right. So that that's making sense because I was about to. My next question for you was, why are you divorced? Oh, why am I divorced? Yeah, you don't have it's... to answer my questions, by the way. You can decline. <laughs> no, it's funny. I'm just going to say this. It's funny mm. because um, sometimes you gotta think about. Only last year or almost two years ago, I was talking with someone and the person was like, ah, Auntie, I'm sorry, but what happened? Why? You know, you would think that um, the woman would go and file for divorce. I didn't file mm. for divorce. Okay. I didn't even know that the, the gun was pointed at me. You really? Know, went, yes, yes. I, I, didn't, I didn't know. I went on vacation with my kids and um, came back and... I think I went on vacation on Monday with the kids and he went to file the second day on Tuesday. Went on vacation on first, went to file on the second. And the guy was asking me like, so what happened? On what basis? And I said, well, because if I, I joke a lot about it. And I mm -hmm. said, well, I was fired for my job as a wife. Mm. Apparently I wasn't good enough as a wife. And he was like, Oh, stop joking. What happened? I said, well, I don't know. But the basis for divorce was abandonment. Mm. And the guy was like, wait, what? Abandonment. Like, aban who abandoned who? I said, I don't know. And he said, I'm sorry, but I have to ask you this question. Did you cheat on him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just laughed. I was said, this a Nigerian person? Yes. This is okay, a Nigerian yeah, Nigerian people will assume you probably cheated. But yes, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> and I said, and honestly, before now, I wouldn't, you know, hype myself. But my friends, everybody that knows me tell me that, look, Lola, you have to start giving yourself a pat on the back. Hmm. You know, I am one person that, and even if he was here or if he's listening or people that know us, they hmm. know, I... I was older than him, but you will okay. never know I was older. Hmm. You would think he was older. And I am How much older? Was it like a big gap? No, no, no. Just three years older. Three years, okay. Yes. All right. And even my children, I didn't know my daughter of that, that he is more I tell everybody he is more important mm -hmm. than every other person in the world, even than my parents. Hmm. You know? hmm. And that is the kind of wife I was. Hmm. I will make sure he eats. Mm -hmm. 
my kids must not touch his food. I don't allow people to cook for him. I do mm. the cooking. I do everything for him. But I figured, he, I don't know. He just thought that he was tired of me. So why wasn't it on? Why wasn't he on that vacation trip with you all? Um, at that time, you see, and and it's and that's why I said it starts from the home, right? And it starts from the extended families and all of that. Mm -hmm. At that time, we started having issues. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we 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 were born on the same day. Really? Yes. So you probably thought it was God made made in heaven, match made in heaven. It I must be. I wouldn't say that. No? But he he didn't feel that way? No, I didn't feel that way. No, I what about him? Too, no, sincerely, I didn't feel that way. No, what about him? Did he feel that way? Maybe he did. He okay. Because if I'm getting married to a person that was born on the same day and I'm in love. Birthday. You said what? We got married on our birthday. I'll, as a normal human being, I would be saying, you know, like... You know, I'll be saying like it must be match made no, in heaven. No, I, I honestly I didn't think so. Really? But I would say something. I went into that marriage with my eyes wide open mm -hmm. and I knew what I was going into. You I, were intentional? I, would I, you say that? I wouldn't say it was a personal intention. You know, sometimes I, got I, you. I always say this God has a reason for bringing people into your life. Mm hmm. I knew that was the guy I was supposed to marry. Hmm. I knew it. Right, right. I knew it. I was And that's a good point to make, actually. Yes. Yeah. So I knew it. It wasn't like somebody told me or... Mm -mm -mm -mm. I hmm. knew it, hmm. you know. And that's why I said, my maturity was this level. Mm -hmm. His maturity was probably here. And it probably didn't help that I was younger, would you say? Even though it's not a thing, I mean, but at the back of your mind, you knew that this person was younger. I knew he was younger, but mm -hmm. I would say that his age had nothing to do with it, but his family had a lot to do with it. Gotcha. Yeah. He was, honestly, he was really mature. When I met him, like, he has this confidence. He, he was, you know, well put together and all of that. Mm -hmm. But his family has a lot to do with it. Mm. external influences and all of external that. influence yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 and yeah. what was i saying i think i'm lost I, I so lost sorry you. oh you could go ahead and answer this somebody <laughs> said oh Gao, is he nigerian oh yes he is nigerian he's nigerian yeah yeah he is nigerian he yeah. is very much nigerian you know? yeah and the the thing was um and i yes was it intentional no mm -hmm. it I wouldn't say it wasn't. It wasn't personal intentions. There were yeah. other influences that drove your decision. No, no, no influences drove my decision. No. So what do you mean by it's not I'm a, a personal man. intention? I'm a one man soldier, not a okay. parent. I okay. may listen to your advice and take from it. Mm -hmm. But when I when I tell you I have a relationship with God, that is who I go to, that is who I talk with. Gotcha. You know. And so but what do you mean by what do you mean by it, it wasn't a personal intention it wasn't a personal intention because left for me if i wasn't um if i wasn't convinced to marry him i wouldn't marry him oh so somebody else convinced you nobody else convinced me so why wasn't it a personal intention okay um when i met him Mm -hmm. I I'm like I'm like one of your kids now. I'm like, why? Well, where's the why? 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 Okay, you want me to go into some details? When I met, you know, him, as 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 only as comfortable yeah, as you are. Okay, yeah. When I met him, I would say that, and and this is not to disrespect him or degrade anyone in any way. I would say that he was not somebody I ordinarily married. But I would say something. The first day I met him. I knew it was going to be my husband. Mm. And so I tried everything I could to avoid him because I didn't want to. Mm. Mm. I tried mm. everything I could personally to avoid him. But But he was that good? He was he had game. He Oh yeah, he, he, he was him. Sure. I am not someone that will be drawn to you because you have money and he knows it. Mhm. Mm 
I am not someone that will be drawn to you because you have everything that will make a woman, you know, attracted mm -hmm. to you. Mm -mm. And he knows that. And I didn't meet him on that level. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't, and his family wouldn't say, oh, that was the reason why. Mm -hmm. And he knows it, you know. But I think, you know, when you're a spiritual person mm -hmm. and you pray always, you hear things, you see things, you know things. Okay. So are you saying you kind of like spiritually knew? Yes. Okay. Because somebody is saying, how so did how she did know? How did she know? Yes. Okay. And how I knew was, um, he called my office one day, and I always say this, but I don't know. He, he kind of always sweep it back. And I always tell him, he called my office one day. This was even before I met him. I saw mm -hmm. him. This was before I met him. He called my office one day. I didn't pick up. I think somebody else picked up. I went out for lunch and came back and the phone was ringing. I was in my office and I checked the caller ID and I saw his name and I just heard that is your husband. Hmm. And I didn't pick the call. I chose not to pick the call because number one, I told myself I did not want to be married to a Nigerian. Oh. He didn't want to be married to a Nigerian. Oh, 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 oh. This, this of, show just took another turn. Because yeah. of some personal experiences that right. you know, people around me have had and uh -huh. even my, from my family members have had and I'm just like, no, I'm done. You know, I don't want to have anything to do with Nigerian men. You know. Mm. So I tried as much as I could to avoid him. But eventually, I couldn't avoid him. Hmm. And there was a particular word that I said, okay, if this is him, he will say this. I just thought of that in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, the first day I met him, uh -huh. the very first day I saw him, mind you, before then I didn't know him. He would just call my office. He's like a business partner with my, okay. with my boss then. He would just call my office and... If my boss is busy, I talk with him, you know, just get information or sometimes just talk with him. But I've never seen him. Hmm. The first day I saw him, went to my boss's office and came to my office and just sat there and he just said that word. <laughs> and that was like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and that was why I said it wasn't. So it wasn't personal. It was just it's too many things were aligning. I would, really be, I would jive to, you right, know, right, but right. because you know, I, I am very stubborn. I you are I, very stubborn. <laughs> Is that what you said? I said I could be very stubborn. Oh, you you changed it to could be very stubborn. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, uh huh. But the thing is, in my relationship, <laughs> right, with him, I am not. I was really subdued. Mm. I was really subdued. Was that um, was that would you say that was intentional? Subdued intentionally or he subdued you? Which one was it? I think the way I started out, because number one, remember he's older than me. I was having issues with his family already. Having he's younger than you, that's what you said, he's right? Younger than me, right, right. Uh, he's yeah. younger than me. And so I don't want him to feel inferior. I don't want him to feel like Gotcha. You know, so I have to intentionally submit, like, okay, oh, I need to buy a pen. So that it doesn't come off this way, so that it doesn't come off this way. That's a lot of energy. That's a lot of energy. And I think I cost a lot of it because in the marriage, I lost my voice. I blurred my boundaries. I didn't stand up to him. Mm. I was an enabler in the marriage. I enabled him a lot. Mm. Even when it comes with the kids, mm. and you know, a lot, a, a lot happens that I really don't want to go into. So it. yeah, you don't have to. So a lot that happened, did it eventually lead to some kind of communication breakdown? We never. We something I noticed from the get go was while we were courting, it wasn't mm. like that. But mm. once we got married, things changed. Mm. How long did the marriage last? I think it lasted about, I would say two years. We lived together for two about years. 12 years, but I would say two years. I enjoyed the marriage for like two years. But okay. we lived together for, you know. 
and, and why was that can you can you get into that please feel free to interrupt me anytime and tell me you know but you know there's a lot there's a lot that's coming at yeah. me at the same time yeah. but what what why, why did you leave together with a person for 12 years and not get married was it we fear were was we were married you were married all those time oh, 12 yeah. years we were married all all those well we were so married. what do you mean by the marriage lasted only two years okay the marriage lasted only two years because for the first two years of marriage mm -hmm. it was it was good it was mm. Got you. Gotcha. Okay. okay. You know. And then I had to go back to school because before I met him, I wanted to go back to school, but I met him. Actually, I wanted to join the military. But I met him, so I couldn't join the military. And then I went back to school. And in school, when I was in school, I started noticing that things were changing. Hmm. Cut of all communication, we don't communicate, we don't talk. This was somebody that will call on the phone, will be on the phone before we got married and talk. You know how boyfriend, girlfriend, you're dating and all of that. Right. Once we were in the marriage, I started noticing that when he's talking, he doesn't say us. He doesn't say me. He says mm. me. Mm. What did you do about that? I caught his attention to that. Mm -hmm. And... It was like, oh, well, yeah, it's my house. Ah. You know, and I was like, it is us. Mm. You know, I guess I was being, I don't know. I guess I was being so stupidly submissive. Mm. Mm. And I was trying to avoid conflict as much as I can. But I tell people now, do not avoid conflict. No, you yeah, absolutely. Fighting. Do not avoid conflict. Yeah. And because he's an aggressive person, mm -hmm. and I don't, uh, we have kids. I don't like the kids saying that. Mm -hmm. I don't even, I don't even want the kids to know that we're arguing. Right. If I want right. to argue with him, I will close the door when the kids are in bed at night, mm -hmm. and then I'll start talking. Mm. You know, it was a relationship where you say everything you want to say, and the part, the other person will just look at you like, "Can I mm. sleep now?" Oh, oh yeah, that would hurt. It's a relationship where, at the beginning of the year, oh, this is um, this is the watchword for the year. Mm -hmm. Like, did we pray together as a family? Did we see so it was a church boy? Is that what you said? Boy. Oh, he was a very religious boy. Oh. If you see him in church, he's so acrobatic. Acrobatic yeah. meaning, oh goodness, he does not sit. He's moving from one place to the other. Everybody is calling him. Oh, he's brother, active. He's like everything. Mm. You know those kind of people. In church. This is very common. This is very common. Oh, yeah. 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 Very very common. Yeah. You would think, and and and, and the thing is. And the thing is, before I met him, I always said, I don't want to meet my man in the church because if I do meet my man in the church, I will not marry him. Mm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have because, look, I grew up in the church. I have a lot So of you know, friends. you're like, yeah, that's not it right there. Yeah. I have a lot yeah. of pastor friends and I know what they do. I have pastor a friends, brothers. So yeah, I, and I know what they do. Yeah. You know, some of them, not all of them. Some of yeah. them I respect the anointing on them, but not all of them. And yeah. a lot of people would and when you see him, you'll be like, Whoa, mm. ah, how I wish my my daughter would marry a man like this, or how I wish I could marry a man like this. There was a time in church somebody came and said, Oh, Stanola, you're so lucky. I wish that I could meet somebody <sighs> like this. I know, right? Jesus bride. <laughs> Jesus is their bride. <laughs> you know. That oh, I wish I could I could marry somebody like your husband. And I told that person, I said, I forbid it for you in Jesus' name. I reject it for you in Jesus' name. You and did surprise, and the lady was surprised, and she was like, "Sister, Lola, why? Why would you say that?" I said, "Because she... a man like him is meant for me, not for, for you." Me. Right, right. That's another angle. That's another angle. A lot of the yeah. time, you see people are like, oh, I wish I can marry that brother. Oh, that brother is just, mm -mm -mm -mm. don't, don't, don't. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. 
Yeah, I, I, I've. <laughs> this, Come and carry. I know, these right? ones are spicy. They are coming. They are coming. <laughs> but I've noticed. Shout out to you, Black Diamond, and shout out to Marriott. Shout out to um, who else was here earlier? Okay, yeah, everybody else that's here. More fresh. Uh, shout out to you guys. Um, you know what I've noticed? Um, I'm very observant. I'm also. I could also be very stubborn. You know, as stubborn people, we also tend to come. We we're kind of leaders, you know. Yes. We're also that, that that could be a threat. So yes, absolutely. Have low self-esteem. Absolutely. That don't know who they are, and that's yeah. why I said at the beginning of the show, we have to teach ourselves to love ourselves. Teach mm -hmm. your children to love themselves. I tell my kids, if nobody wants to be your friend, be your own friend. Yeah, yeah. Stop with Learn that. Learn to befriend yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. I come with this high self-esteem, this mm. confidence level. And you are coming this low. So even if I'm going this far, you're bringing mm -hmm. me down. Yeah. Yeah. It can be like you, you use the right word, a threat. You know, in, um, well, in professional world, they have the SWOT analysis, right? Yeah. The opportunities, the threats, the strength and the weaknesses. Yes. Every personality trait has those things. Yeah. And, and this is where the nuances, this is where the context comes in. Nothing is absolutely right or absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it, like you have to really take the time to study these things over time with respect to, again, context. Whatever yeah. context is a moving target, you know. And the way we were all trained is this one-way thing. And either you are extremely aggressive, you know what you're doing, nobody oh, can yeah, tell you nothing, passive. or you are extremely passive. And yeah, this is where the issues are coming in, you know. Yeah, and you know, I, you know, growing up in a home, that's him now, growing up in a home where um, the family believed that as the Iyawo, you have to kneel down, mm -hmm. you have to grow me show. I am like, excuse you. So, 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 so you, you pushed against those things? I, I pushed against it. Oh, you did? I did. And that is where it started from, like, oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kony respect. Oh, Kini Kony. Oh, um, she is this. Eh, Kone Kule Kimi. Wait, is that a thing when they say Omo Tiatani? Or you were actually into theater? Um, back in Nigeria. Yes. Back in Nigeria, okay. Yes. Um, yes. Because I could see them turning that to a thing, like Omo Tiatani. Yeah. You know? yeah. Mm -hmm. because back, back in Nigeria, I was in broadcasting. I did, okay. You know, one or two things with. Um, What's his name? He's in um, Ireland now. Deji Adenuga. I did some things. Um, some well, things. Is it possible that some people might recognize you? Is that that level that you're talking about right now? Uh, on, is it on, in Lagos? On, 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 I, was, on, I was on radio. Radio, okay. 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 Not, yes, and I did something with Mount Zion, even here. Um, okay. With Mount Zion. Mount oh, Zion. Yeah. Were you a member of Mount Zion? Um, we have a drama unit, a drama team here in the U.S., yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, because we all grew up on that, you know. I know. <laughs> yeah, we all grew up on Mount Zion, so don't get people started yeah, with Aya Matanga. Don't get everybody yeah, started with that. Aya Matanga, I know, right? <laughs> back home, here in the U.S. You know? Okay, here in the U.S., got yeah. you, got so you. it's like, oh, I'm a common equal, you respect, I want to support, I'm a common equal, I'm a common equal, you know. And it got to a place where if his family, uh, if they're happy with me, he's happy mm -hmm. with me. If they're not happy with me, <sighs> they're happy with me. Yeah. If I discuss something with him in the home mm -hmm. and his mother is talking with me, his mm -hmm. mother will be using exactly the same term that he used wow so it's I mean, almost like it's very obvious that they've discussed some things I, mean, something like, I, I don't tell them anything and it's so funny that even before the divorce before he mm -hmm. went to file for divorce right you know, his elder sister told me something his elder sister said bola i don't know how you guys do this but my mother's hand is on the neck of your marriage now hmm. mm. how did she get to know so much about you and it's i said only one way no I don't tell her anything. Mm. So, you know, it's a lot of things. And when you have a child that has low self-esteem, that um, always wants the um, acknowledgement, 
and praise validation and family yeah always wants to be recognized you know always wants to um be acknowledged and all of that hmm. it's it's difficult it's difficult to raise a man man in that child yeah it's 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 uh, because that's not the reality of the world we live in uh, a man a man must be a man and i know we're in the era where people say let the men speak or say emma we careful be careful with what you're asking for you know there's order in this thing there's god men women children and you are asking to replace it you are asking to take us out of order yeah. it's going to be catastrophic it, it will be i look i respect the order of marriage and i tell everybody that cares to listen i respect the order of marriage mm -hmm. i respect marriage i love marriage i encourage marriage mm. i i encourage people to stay in marriage mm. but if your marriage it, it it was getting to a place where i had to go back and that's why i said it wasn't anybody that told me to marry him if it mm. was somebody that told me to marry him you probably that wasn't who you are anyway you wouldn't do that i no, i wouldn't if yeah, it was yeah. somebody that told me to marry him i would either hate that person now Mm -hmm. But I won't be able to go back to that person to make corrections. So I went back mm -hmm. to the author mm -hmm. of my life and I told him. Mm -hmm. I, 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 tell, I tell people, and my friends, know, I pray mm -hmm. to get out of that marriage. You prayed to get out of that I marriage? Prayed. Because you were you probably, were you ever going to pull the trigger yourself if you didn't? There was a time. Mm hmm. I started, I, I thought of it. I started researching about it. I wanted to go about it. And I think it was during one of my quiet times. And I heard the Lord tell me clearly, if you mm. divorce him, you divorce me. Mm. And I was like, okay, what if he divorced me? And then he said, then let it be him. Right. Right. But if you divorce him, you divorce me. Even though I was not happy. I had plenty of opportunity to cheat on him. Hmm. A few ladies told me, Amalola, you don't need to bother yourself. Just look, just have a side. Somebody a a side dude, a side piece somewhere. I cannot do that. Hmm. I cannot do that. And I always tell myself something. My vow was to God hmm. and not to him. Hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah. And I remember telling him once, I said, the day you lay a finger, I'm not saying a hand, the day you lay a finger on me, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. And even though that happened, mm -hmm. I was still going to stay in it. You said that happened? Yes. Oh, even wow. though it happened, I was still going to stay in it. But mm -hmm. he did it in the presence of my children. And then he started involving my children. Oh, no. So from there for me, it's like going down the drain. Like, no, mm -mm, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I, I realized that a lot of us, Nigerian-born American women, mm -hmm. not all of us, but I would say a handful of us, or a lot of us, mm -hmm. still believe in roughing it. Please yeah. don't. I tell anybody that cares to listen now, don't rough it. It's not worth roughing. Mm. If it is worth it, you would know. Most of the time, it's not worth it. Yeah, you know, it's not. Worth it. Especially it's not, when kids it's are not. involved and your kids are seeing mm -hmm. what is going on. What are you showing your kids? You're telling your kids yeah. it's okay for a man to treat me like trash. Yeah, yeah, and you're teaching your sons uh, lack of self-respect because yes. when a when a man has self-respect, there's a certain way he moves. Yeah. that uh he would be the one thinking about all this stuff ahead of you so you would follow suit in yeah. terms of and reciprocating multiplying it you know making that home peaceful he will carry yeah. you along because even if you raise your voice even if you were raised a certain type of way and you raised your voice because there was a conflict there's a way because of the self-respect there's a way he handled us he doesn't avoid conflict he can manage conflict yes. he can handle conflict and he can learn and grow from it he can also yeah. build his family from it yes as and opposed to shutting and, down yes and a man like that will be a servant leader hmm. a man that is willing to be a servant hmm. to lead you 
Mm. Is that not what Christ said? The head shall be the the least. Yeah, that's the service. That's the that's the uh, that's the what do you call it now in professional world? Uh, leadership service, something like yeah, that. Servant leader. Servant leader. Yes, yeah. that's that's the reality of the future. As and, I said, I'm interested. Right. This is the this is the way forward. But Christ had been talking about it since the beginning. Since the beginning, and you see, it's unfortunate because for our men, and I, I'm not saying all of our men. I know if few good men mm-hmm. few good Nigerian men. most of our men are brought up to be like i am the head mm. you are the head pay the bills you are the head change mm. our wardrobe every quarter mm. you are the head do the things you should do do the things that christ did for her do it mm. Mm-hmm. but you had the you're the head the woman is sharing the bills with you which i'm not saying it's a bad thing it's right. good we support each other. I don't have to answer, but was he faithful during the marriage? Mm. Honestly, honestly, I want to say that I, I, I think I can say that 85% maybe he was. What do you mean by that? What does that mean? <laughs> a question. And I say that because, again, I'm going to throw myself out there. I was talking with someone mm-hmm. and I said, if my man was cheating on me, mm-hmm. will I be mad? I may not be mad, but I may be upset. I What's the difference? Why. What's the difference? Will I be mad? Being mad means that I'm good. All hell will let loose. Okay. I said like you went crazy, mad. I said no, literally I'm mad. Not, no, I'm not gonna go crazy because you cheated. So you'll me. be upset. You'll be I'll upset. Be upset. Yeah, but but you're, you're, gonna, you're not gonna you're not gonna turn the house upside down. No, if it's mm. a one-time thing, no, mm. because that one time and it could it could be anything. Mm. And honestly, people that knows me know this is me. I'm not saying it because I'm on air or I'm out there. No, people mm-hmm. that knows me know this is me. Right. You know. The Bible supports women. With What's children. going on, black man? How you doing, man? It says the Bible supports women with children being married again by way of her husband dying. The Bible states God hates divorce. Yes. I Can you explain that to me? I'm not sure what that means. God hates divorce. However, mm-hmm. however, when you are divorced, God does not hate you. Mm-hmm. And what that is saying is, yes, because God built marriage. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want us to be separated. It's just like the relationship we have with him. We are married to him, right? It's like we have a relationship with him. Okay. If you go apart from him, he hates it. He doesn't like it. Yeah, yeah, if but I can hate something. It could be a necessity sometimes. Um, yes. Let but me see. Then, go ahead. Then, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. You were saying you something. you have to be divorced, honestly, I mm-hmm. would encourage you to, if you're in a relationship where you're not, where you're not happy, mm-hmm. if I was in a relationship where I was thinking of killing myself, where I was thinking of harming myself, mm-hmm. a relationship where you are abandoned, mm-hmm. a relationship where you were giving back to a child in the hospital and you died and you were revived and the man abandoned you there or neglected mm-hmm. you and didn't care. Mm-hmm. So would you want me to continue to be in that relationship, a relationship where the man is beating me? Mm-hmm. You see, all of this heightened when um, the late singer, Osinachi, died. Mm. That was when I went back to God that, God, do you want my case to be like this woman? That were you still married at the time? I was, we were not, technically we were not married because at that time, it's mm-hmm. been, we've not been sleeping in the same room for a very long time. You, you did say you lived together for 12 years, but the marriage only lasted two years. The marriage last... Uh, I enjoyed the marriage for two years. You enjoyed it for two years. Habit for ten years as husband and wife, but towards the end, when he was going to file for divorce, like a year before he even filed for divorce, he has started, you know, sleeping in a separate room, doing things, you know, mm-hmm. taking things away from the house, asking me for the kids' passports, you know, mm. taking my name off. Um, the joint um, properties that we had, uh, uh, whether it was a property, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, he had this house before I met him, so okay. that's that's not my property. That's his right. property. But 
you know, we broadcast together, we did some things together, taking my name off of it and all of that. You, you broadcast know. it together? We bought cars. Oh, together. cars. Okay. I thought you were on YouTube somewhere together or something. No, 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 like, no. Like, okay, no. okay, all right. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I remember when I first started um, A Mother's Body in Den. Mm -hmm. He discouraged me from continuing. Oh, so you had wanted, because you were a broadcaster in Nigeria, so you've always been inclined to do some kind of broadcasting and you started yeah. a show while you were together. He I discouraged started. you. What was the reason that he gave? Um, It didn't give me any reason. Hmm. It was just like, oh, you know what? Um, what if I introduce, I see she's in radio. So this is a man that doesn't have friends. And you can smell it, that um, cap. <laughs> yes. But well, you know, for peace sake, mm -hmm. most of the things I did when I was with him was for peace sake. If I tell you that a man is vicious, I am mm -hmm. not, God sees my heart. I'm not throwing him under the bus. Mm -hmm. This is a man that we are in the same house. He would keep malice with me hmm. for three months. Yeah, that's not healthy. I cannot joke with him. We don't sit on the same chair together. I cannot rest my head on his shoulder. I cannot hold his hands in public. Okay, yeah, he doesn't do PDF. Fine. Even mm. in the house. Mm. My children have to say one day, Mommy, I never... No, it, she told him, Daddy, you never hugged Mommy. You never kissed Mommy. They do pay attention. Oh, children pay attention. We think they, they do. don't. Children pay attention. They do. They do but and, and all of that, all of that together, you know, and, and what I went through, I tell you, it's it's just something I'm just minimizing my experience in that marriage with him. Yeah, but you're doing that out of respect now for we're for not gonna team. call him an ex. From yeah. the person who would not call X, right? You're doing that out of yeah. respect for your kids and, and, and still a family nonetheless, right? Yes, nonetheless. You know, but it doesn't mean that, I, like I said, I, I'm still in the process of finalizing my divorce. But when my divorce is over, yes, I can mm. really go in detail, you know. It was, honestly, it was, um, <laughs> Thinking back on it, it was a marriage that I wouldn't pray for my enemy. Wow. I would not. Wow. I would not pray for my enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, all of those experiences. That would make sense. Really From the little you've told us, it makes sense that you will say that, you know. Yeah. From the little you've told us. Now, you said something earlier on. I want to kind of zone in back on that. Um, you said... Uh, they didn't teach kids to be good spouses. When you listen to the Indomie generation women, I call them Indomie generation, on the internet, they will say that they didn't train the boys to be husbands. And then when you listen to Indomie generation men <laughs> on the internet, they will say, nobody is teaching these women how to be wives no more, right? They're saying that. And you said um, they, they, never, they were not training... I have to tell you this. That's the first time I've heard anybody say that. And I agree wholeheartedly that children are not being trained to become spouses. They're not being trained to become and spouses. Where did you get that from? That insight. You see, when, when you go through, when you pass through fire, when you come out, you come out refined, right? When you, you come out with what? You come out refined. When you pass refined, the yes, yes. You come mm -hmm. out refined. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of, there is a lot of things that I experienced. Mm -hmm. My daughter is fourteen, mm -hmm. and my daughter will tell you, I don't want a man like my father. Eesh, that's tough. And I tell her something. What kind I of what kind of conversations lead to that? Because I can hear more Indomie generation people say, "Why would you allow your daughter to say that ever about their father?" What kind of conversations lead to your fourteen year old saying that? Because I have conversations with them, even my nine year old. Hmm. I tell my son, "The a man is a protector hmm. first." 
before you become a provider. Mm -hmm. I need to know you can protect me as my friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then a provider. First, you have to be my friend and protect me as a friend before I have a relationship with you. And then mm. you provide for me. Mm. I tell my son, you're a protector, you're a provider, you're a lover, you are intuitive, mm. you are a deep thinker. You don't just blot out anything from your mouth. You don't touch, you don't poke, you don't push, you don't shove a woman, not even a man. Mm. I tell him, you're a king, you're royalty. But you have to carry your royalty in ways that bespeak royalty. Have you ever seen God raise his voice at you as a child? So why should you raise your voice at your sister? Mm. And I tell my daughter too, you don't talk down at your brother because you're older than him does not give you the permission to talk down at him. Mm. Mm. You know? And now, now, the question, right? when you are having a conversation with your daughter right and she lands at i don't want a husband like my father mm. right is she pulling that from her experience of what she saw or Absolutely. are you painting a certain type of picture of their father for them obviously from what you've shown us here today you don't do that that's not who you are i right? would not i would not Mm -hmm. So so, how do you respond to your daughter saying that if, the, if when she says that? How do you respond to that? I tell her that I acknowledge what she said. I acknowledge her feelings because I have to really acknowledge that in her. And mm -hmm. I tell her something. The person you run away from is the person you become. Yes, you attract so what I you fear the most. Tell her, I tell her, what is it in your father mm -hmm. that you don't like in a man? She made a list of the man she wants to marry. Fortunately, this is on my desk. She made this really? list when she was five years old. She's already making it. Oh, at five years old. Oh, wow. She made that list. I made it with her when mm. she was five years old. Five, six, when she was that. And I tell her, your father is a good... And honestly, he's a good guy. He has his good side, but he is vicious. That's real. That's real. Uh, and when you say vicious, is, is that mostly passive? It's like passive in nature? This guy is aggressive. Oh, he's aggressive too. So it's passive aggressive. He is. <laughs> no. uh, Julia says, this is my story and I'm still in the marriage, even though we have stopped intimacy for more than one year. We don't talk. Ouch. Sorry to hear that. I'm sorry you're going through that, Juliet, but a lot is happening. And and honestly, yes, a protector first, not just a provider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you, you see, that that's part of the reason why I started the podcast, Single Again with LFA and Bad, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of women go through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Most of us are single while we are still in the marriage, but the marriage has already packed up. Mm. Now, I will advise women, if it's not abusing, if it is not emotionally draining, if it is not heating up on your mental health, if you mm -hmm. think you can still work it out, right. work it out. What does that mean, working it out? If you, can, if you can salvage the marriage, if you can work it out together, if there's somebody that can talk with you guys, if your husband has someone that he or she, I mean, he respect, not he or she, mm -hmm. he respect, and your wife has somebody that they respect, that they can talk together. I don't like the idea of third party in marriage. I always right. tell people, go seek counseling, go talk mm -hmm. to professionals that does not know you, mm -hmm. but will come from a logical, critical point of view. Crit logical, critical, I love that. Logical, yes. critical point of view. Yeah, that will talk with you and make you both see your shortcomings and help you to pull your resources together and be one. But hmm. if it is draining you emotionally, I hate divorce. I do not like divorce. I will not encourage Me either. You. Me but either. But but I also hate uh, marriages where people are not enjoying the marriage. Yeah. I also if hate that is, too. Yeah. So. If it's gotten to that level, please, mm -hmm. sort it out amicably. Yeah. So don't. 
it it is look on my um on our podcast and on i have a facebook page where we just throw out snippets it is mm -hmm. very expensive going through a divorce it, it is. is emotionally physiologically psychologically draining yes yes we and, need to we need to say that louder for a lot of people and it is not just you involved the kids are involved here they all do they're all going through it the family i cried a lot after i moved out mm, mm. because the first thing that came to my mind was my kids mm. unknown to me this guy had poisoned my kids there was a time when i was in that marriage that i thought my my daughter and i we were enemies mm. if i tell her to mm. do something she will tell me no she's not doing it if her daddy do not did not tell her to do it wow yes wow until one day she broke down i broke down her younger brother broke down and she was apologizing to me and i'm like all i'm asking for is just people to listen to me is it too much to ask and she said well daddy said i did this daddy said i'm like you daddy said this daddy said that a father painted me to the devil before her. Wow. And all of this because I don't, and he gaslights me a lot. That's something I have to say that he gaslights me a lot. And mm. all of this because I don't, if, if I have an issue with him, I don't discuss it with the kids. Mm. It is me and you, not with the kids. I never knew he was going and telling the kids. Even when we were divorced, he told the kids I was not going to divorce your mom. But then he went around and said, oh, your mom divorced me. Well, and that, then I had to bring out the divorce. Just in a few years down the line, they can disprove that. I, I actually showed them. And that's something I did. I was very transparent with them. Hmm. I showed them the divorce paper he served me. And I said, read it. Who served who? Hmm. My daughter was dazed. Yeah, that, that's part of the reason why rough. she said, I don't want to marry a man like this. And I hmm. told him. I told her, you don't want to marry a man like this. What kind of a man do you want to marry? Mm. And what kind of a woman are you? Mm. Mm. You have to tell yourself the kind of person you want to be as a wife. And I say this, marriage can either yeah. make or mar you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm grateful to God that honestly, for all the years I was married to that guy, mm -hmm. he never made me think twice about god what do you mean by that because if i had wanted to there was a time his mother told me something his mother said ah lola i'm sorry for those that doesn't understand you but probably will interpret ah, lola, my L'Oreal, Shumo. I won't read it so for only for a little bit of a little bit I don't tell her anything. She will just come up with some things that ah, whoa, that's more one. That's it. I want to enjoy me at Babe. Ah, I know you are ready. Come and lose your logo. Come and shed that. Come and shower. Our parents do tell us a lot of toxic stuff. They do. They do. This was a man that I still have his father's um, some of his father's voicemail on my phone. If you hear the voicemail, you will ask me. Is he fighting with you? Every time he calls me, he's like he's fighting with me. You're talking about no, your father, no, your father-in-law. No, that was before now. Before now, at that time. Before now, yes. Every time, be be like cursing, like just being so aggressive, just so angry, just so full of, I don't know. Hmm. And my kids are seeing all of this. My mm. son, recently, a few days ago, we read, um, he, there is a story Bible I read most nights when he wants mm. to go to bed. And we were reading how Isaac um, got a wife, got Rebecca, they got Rebecca and all of that. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and I said, so do you understand what the, um, that story says? And he said, yes, that Isaac loved Rebecca, but not like daddy. Hmm. A nine year old. Yeah. And I said, why? He said, yeah. well, he wasn't abusive to her. They pick they pick up everything. And I said, What they what do you mean everything. by abusive? Yeah. And he said, Well, I saw what daddy did to you. Hmm. Hmm. So 
Um, and, and that's, I use that again to teach him. I use every moment as a teachable moment. Mm -hmm. That now you saw how Isaac loved Rebecca. That is how you are supposed to love your wife. I told him, I said, after God, when you get married, hmm. your wife comes first. Yeah. After God, your yeah. wife, your yeah. children. Your, sp your spouse. Your spouse comes before your children. Yes. Basically, yeah. yeah. Yes. Then your children, then extended family. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I said, that's the that's the order if you want yes, to keep it like that for a long time mm -hmm. or your sister ahead of your wife or your children mm. you're not relevant at that time yeah th this is something that's very hard i'm noticing for a lot of people to comprehend but it's something we have to because if mm -hmm. we know that we don't want our kids to have divorced home if we mm -hmm. want them to be happy in their home we have to learn to remove ourselves from the picture and i was glad because my parents removed themselves from the picture mm. how did you we feel about that people. did you did you get to one point and you felt like you needed people to also back oh, you up no. did you resent that came, when my parents first came to the united states mm -hmm. oh goodness I, I don't want to go into it because it's okay too, too let me ask you this question this person yeah because i don't listen if you get comfortable over time and stuff like that you know that we have multiple multiple opportunities to inject stories in a way that we don't have to throw our loved ones under the bus you know what i mean so i completely respect that um she said that's only if both parties are willing and determined when you were talking about to work it out work it out what do you say about that because the reality the default, I don't want to say all the time, but I'm about to say it. All the time is that one person is willing and the other person might think they are willing, but they are coconutted. <laughs> That's the reality all the time. And you said, if you can work it out, work it out. How do you consolidate this two? Again, I will say something. I am a praying woman. Mm-hmm. Take it back to the author. Mm -hmm. Let him direct you. Let mm. him lead. Yeah. Look for people. If your parents, if you know that instead of the parents to kind of merge it together, they're scattering it. Go for counseling. Counseling, absolutely. Yeah. Go for counseling. Uh, what about individual counseling? Is that acceptable? Yes. Why do you couples counseling? You have to seek individual counseling to work on yourself individually. Exactly. And I'm not saying I am 100% perfect in my marriage. Mm -hmm. I am not saying that it was all his fault. But in a situation whereby you don't even know what you're doing that is wrong. Hmm. And communication is ultimate in relationship. Hmm. Yeah. Before we came on this show, you and I communicated. Absolutely, yeah. And we had an understanding. Communication is ultimate. If we cannot communicate, mm. there is no, the center cannot hold. Hmm. If I cannot tell you this is what you did, I am the kind of person that will tell you, Allah, this is what you did. I don't, I, I, I'm upset with you and blah, blah, blah. I may be upset for a few minutes and then I'll come back to you. If you're still following, I'll look at you. You're still funny. You better just let's make up oh, so that we'll have time to fight another one. Another I'm one. The person I am. Right, right. Let's make up to fight another day. Yeah, some people don't know when to stop. They don't know people how don't. to do that. I tell yeah. you, I was married and I will be, my husband will be keeping malice with me for three months in the house. Yeah, that's rough. Uh, the, and gaslighting you yeah. and telling people what he did and projecting it on you that you did it yeah um julia says his family are always she's talking about herself now she's sharing a little more and i want you to see if you can add some thoughts to it his family are always interfering and they want me to leave but i don't want to leave because of my kids they want me to leave so that they will be talking my children taking my children wherever they want what are your thoughts for this person um <laughs> if his family wants you to leave does he want you to leave right that's another thing his family may want it he may not want it but he may not know how to talk with you or how to how to tell you hmm. that because his family are heavily involved 
Mm. I would say try and see if both of you can talk it out. If you cannot talk it out, honestly, if you think you're threatened, please leave. And when you're leaving, leave with your kids. I remember um, his family also told one of his cousins that, and to my local my lord, I'm a bow more way, she bought more one. Yeah, what does that look like? And I told them, oh, that's that's to me, that's that was threatening to me. That was a threat. Yes. And I told him, I said, number one, and I have to use that language. I said he was mm -hmm. a donor. He was a donor. Ha, he donator. Ha. Yes. He was a donor. Mm. I, I decide. <laughs> Where the kids go. Yes. Well, this was in America, right? This was in America. Oh, yeah, yeah sir. And That's... I said, look, I, and, and even the he, he doesn't have that leverage here. Yeah, he doesn't have that leverage because you, mm. you're, not, um, you're not a knucklehead. You have a job. You're okay. Right. You have to be on drugs. Something crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take care of them. You're capable. You're cognitively able. Please, do, look, no matter what happens, do not let anybody take your kids from you. Yeah. Especially if you're in America, you have that leverage. Except yeah, absolutely it, it, I would say I would I would add on to that and say um, that that's not a real threat. I really want to go back to what you your first answer, which is she needs to determine if he wants you to leave. That's that's where the focus should be. And that's the point of leverage. Uh, at this point, she's going to need to let go of any obsession with how the family feels. Yes. You know, because yeah. that can because that can affect and influence your behavior too against a husband that may just be confused right now. Yes. And that is why I would encourage them if he is willing to go for counseling. And if he's not willing, honestly, both of you just sit with him and ask him, Okay, I know you want me to leave. Is it okay with you? What will you use to support? You know, have an amicable conversation. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. But let him know, I am not leaving my kids. You mm -hmm. can visit, they can visit you. Sometimes, you see, sometimes it's not about going straight to divorce. Separation sometimes can help us see Absolutely. things clearly. Absolutely, yeah. Maybe Absolutely. if you just separate for some time, let him just go away, or you just take the kids and just go away somewhere for months, hmm. it probably could heal some things. Uh, it's it's all of that is pretty rough you know there's no way to form a shape it for every party involved you know and um you know it's kind of crazy uh dear me hey dear me how are you she says how oh, wow uh three months i can't live with that 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 can kill me me i would just start looking around you know my you know i would just uh you know i would just start doing all kind of three months yeah i tell you, I tell you when i was with this guy i <laughs> Look, I have met men that are like, all I have to say is just, okay, they are willing to go to the moon and back for more. But I am like, no, I will not cheat on this guy. I had to leave several jobs because I don't want to cheat on him. And every time he sees me, he hears me moving job. He doesn't know the reason mm. why. There was a time that, honestly, I almost, almost... Mm fell into this temptation because we weren't we weren't you know being intimate i don't want to be too vocal on on air we weren't being intimate and you weren't talking with me you know and there is this guy that is paying me all the attention i want if i mm. want anything i just most of the time i just have to say oh i i'm thinking of this and he's doing it mm. Any sane woman that has blood running through his vein will do that, right? But I, and it's so funny because I preach to God and I'm like, I call him Abba, like Abba, this is getting so real hmm. that I cannot hold back anymore. This temptation hmm. is too much. I am going to fall if you hmm. don't do something. Just when I said that prayer, I got, uh, I got, offered another job somewhere else so i had to leave just mm. at the verge of falling for that temptation i had to leave mm. yeah you know so, let, let me ask you this question was it previewed at all to the potentiality of this attention you were getting 
did he find some things? Did he mess him up? I think in a way, I I just let him know, like, man, you know, like, man, you know, uh, people say I'm this, all that, even the guy said this and this, and I don't know if he was paying attention or if he was listening. Did he ever accuse you of cheating? Oh, no, that is one thing he knows I'll never do. Okay. So it wasn't like uh, insecure about somebody giving you attention or anything like that at any point in time. I think his insecurity was more like I have the tendency of breaking breaking through. Like I am very outspoken. I get things done. Mm. Like I'm very assertive. You know, I am a strong-willed woman. So mm -hmm. his um, insecurity was he knows that I was committed to him. Mm -hmm. He knows I was committed to him in the marriage and the kids. Okay. His insecurity was more like, and even when I met him, and not again, not to undermine him, not mm -hmm. to is is doing is doing well now. When okay. I met him, I was doing I was doing better than he was. Oh, okay. And you met him in Nigeria or here? Here, I never knew him from Nigeria. I met okay. Him. You met him yeah. here. Okay. So his insecurity was more like, and of course, he's seen my friends. He saw even the guys that I was friends with friends mm -hmm. with he mm -hmm. saw their level he knew the kind of person that i associate with so okay. i think his insecurity was more like i am well off or I that you don't that you don't need him yes and people tend to swell towards me more mm. than people think. well that's a real thing for a lot of indomie generation men now <laughs> <laughs> i think men in general we need we need we need to feel like you need us that's part of the thing that that drives us and i think that's why i said i was stupidly, mm. stupidly submissive mm. yeah you so so that's a tricky thing you, you never have to subdue yourself to cater to that because it's going to backfire and that was the mistake i made i shouldn't have done that you know mm. but i wanted him to feel like look with all of this i get things done and i'm doing this and I'm, I'm always thinking of oh what if we do this what if we do that and he's mm. always telling me, no, we can't do it. No, we can't do it. Ah, okay. me, I'll just be like, yes, babe. Yeah, yeah. go oh, on, so. No, we can't do it. And mm -hmm. he's the type of man that wants to, like, when I say jump, that's when I want you to jump. Oh, he was that kind of guy. He was that kind of he guy. He needed that. And that was the way the relationship was. Do you think it was being disagreeable intentionally just to push against your assertiveness? Yes. And he was doing it to subdue me. Uh, he yeah. was doing it to tame me. And, I, and I'm going to use his word. I cannot control you anymore. Controlling. That controlling thing. That was a whole big conversation on the your view with the ladies on TVC yesterday. Uh, wanting to control a, a, a woman. And I'm like, God, it's actually in my pipeline that we're going to discuss that. Like, why do you need to control a, a whole human being? that you're going to burn up your horsepower it's not sustainable it's not going to work oh my god this is um like i said earlier i think it's just hey if you want to jump in the studio right now it's the time to jump in so if you want to chop it up with that the link is pinned to the top um this is where this is why i said i think a lot of people are having a hard time comprehending what we're talking about because We've been coming for so long with this uh, not sustainable system of doing relationships. It's just not. Uh, you can say, hey, women have been exposed to the Western world. Uh, you can say it's because the jackpot. I don't think it's women's exposure to the Western world. I'm, I'm not saying all women are innocent. You know? right. I'm not saying we're innocent or anything. I don't think it's exposure to the Western world. I think it is inability to be mendable mm -hmm. it is some men and some women's inability mendable as an ad adapt to adapt yes okay you know to to be to be able to adapt to accept and to acknowledge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. look yeah. marriage the way we do marriage today is not the way we did marriage yesterday it, it couldn't it's possibly be yeah. So as a man that wants to control, you have to be mendable mm. that even when you are controlling, 
the woman will not even see it as controlling, but the woman will see it as you collaborating with her, mm. Mm. working together with her mm. for the good of everybody in the family. Mm. Because it's like we have a company, you are the head of the company. Yeah. I am your deputy. The children are our staff. They see mm. how we manage. And when they get their own company, that is how they will manage. Mm. Mm. So what are we what are we telling what are we what is tickling down? Yeah, I mean ancient wisdom have always um acknowledged this. You know. Uh Bruce Lee, even Bruce Lee, who died a long time ago, um, he talked about be like water you know yes you can't like there's there's no way in life including every businesses that pay you that pay you and your family that you work for organizations institutions where they don't teach this yes and unfortunately we don't take that into our homes we and we think know. and we think it's only inside of our temple i said the only thing we disrespect in life is marriage and relationships we're so disrespectful to it we think we can just create our own rules out of our ass excuse yeah. my french yeah. and, and and it will and it will just work against the principles of life that make life work itself yeah. you cannot be stiff mm -hmm. and operate in this world there's so many moving variables you have to act. that's the whole point of active listening so you can make because it's a moving target always yes yes and honestly all of this all of these experiences just made me like okay a mother's body why don't you start single again why don't you share with women why don't you encourage women why don't you come together mm -hmm. build a safe community where there is no judgment no judgment as you are share mm -hmm. your story let's walk this journey together mm -hmm. it's not easy being divorced mm. it's not easy being a single mother mm. and the stigma in our community is so much Yes, yeah, a shaming thing. It mm -hmm. and making you feel like it was your fault. Yeah, fault, fault is not. It's not fault is never relevant as far yeah, as we're concerned here. That I'm celebrating my divorce. I celebrate my divorce every day because I am so excited that I am out of that marriage. Mm, right, but at least you're telling the full story with context right you're not saying you graduated from a curriculum like tiamari uh, <laughs> at least you're you're giving a full context of um because you just finished saying divorce is hard but you're also saying you're celebrating right so there's obviously uh, all types of nuances but you're also bringing people together you're creating a community yes. where people can feel safe and not feel shamed yes because those things were always poisonous they will continue to be poisons the idea of shaming I, shame shame does not born out of instilled value you know there's a type of shame that hey i did something that works against the value mm -hmm. i knew we know that 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 shame is an effect not a cause but the shame of let's cost this to force you into that shame never works yeah. it never works it you is. know it is yeah. and i think i think our community have to do better we have to move past that stage and try to be accepting mm -hmm. and you know empathetic mm. it's not easy for a woman except if it's that woman that just wants wants out mm -hmm. it's not easy for a woman to go through divorce and then mm. coming out and you're looking at her like she wants well the, the starts saying hi to her and mm -hmm. you are putting your husband as if she's a husband snatcher, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a it's it's a lot of stigma. It's a stigma, and, yeah. And yeah. think of and that's why I, I say that I'm not going to throw my baby's dad under the, the, the bus because mm -hmm. he in his own right is a good man. Mm -hmm. What do you he mean by that? Office. Yeah. What what do you I, mean I what do you mean by what do you mean what what do you mean by that? In his own right is a good man. What do you mean by that? In his own right, in his own right. As in, like, he th do you, are you saying he thinks he's a good man, but you don't think that? Is that what you mean by um, that? I think every human being is innately good. Okay. You know, he has some good in him. Uh huh. I lived with him for like what twelve years. I would not. I would hardly speak bad about him. I would only say what he did. Mm hmm. You know. 
And I wouldn't come and say, oh, no, he's not a good man or because he did this, men are bad. No. If a car eats you and kill you, it mm -hmm. is still that car that will take you to the funeral. Mm. So, so he's not, no, I wouldn't say, no, I would not. I, I wouldn't right. do that. It's not because that's the way people move for the most part when they come out of this type of situation. Oh, no. They, 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 they think of that person as absolutely bad. No, mm -mm. Mm. I have wonderful children. That, that means if I say he is bad, that means the product that comes out from that marriage is also bad. Is no, that, he's yeah. not. Every time I see my kids, my daughter looks like him. <laughs> so that's why I can't call him an ex. Mm. One of the reasons why I can't say he's ex, <laughs> because mm. he's there, you mm. know. But yeah. the relationship with him is just not there. And I respect him. Mm -hmm. I respect him. And are you guys cordial now? Are you very cordial with? We don't, he doesn't talk with me. He doesn't talk to you at all. Mm -mm. He doesn't wow. talk with me. Even when I try to, you know, like make arrangements, hey, the kids. What do you think he resents in his own idea? Because I'm sure he's talking to other people, like we knew was talking to his parents. What is it that he resented so badly that he wouldn't I even talk to you? I I honestly don't know but honestly if i can say this mm -hmm. i think it is the fact that he knows that i am better oh are you saying he's jealous of you it could be yeah there are there are there have been instances where i was like i'm your wife you're yeah. not competing oh you know there have been instances where i'm like i cannot compete with you hmm. you know right so it's 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 yes there is an element of of, of jealousy okay yeah yeah or, or let's call it competition i do think a lot of marriages break apart because people don't identify they have a hard time identifying when they are competing with their partner it's a very very subtle competition and as where, a man I, mm -hmm. i'm sorry i have to jump in as sure. a man it blows your boundary and authority yes it does because you if you're so you sure of yourself it's Why do you need to do that? When, he said, yeah. but when I said it to him, I was like, really? That's mm. even embarrassing for me to think. Mm. Or to perceive that you compete with you. Mm. Why would I do that? You're my husband. Yeah, it's the, it's the, it's, it's the low self-esteem thing we were talking about earlier. Mm. Um, Mario says, as a Christian woman, how were you received in that community? Well, again, I will say something. I am one person that I don't care. You don't care anyway. <laughs> we don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Hold on, let me play this for you. I haven't played this for you because I'm going with your energy. But let me play this for you. You know. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Still don't care. I don't care. I don't. I don't care. She doesn't care. I don't know if you can tell yet, but she. I don't think she. She cares, but she doesn't care. You know. Um. Yeah, not she cares about her family, not <laughs> not riffraffs in the church. Excuse me, excuse me. So, yeah. so the thing is, I I really don't um um be, I think during COVID um stopped going to the church we used to go to together because I knew there would be a lot of judgment in that church, which oh, wow. was a church that I didn't really I I wasn't really in tune to. What well, Nigerian church? church? Yes, Nigerian church. Nigerian church. Ah, so ah, these people. I, I started going to an American <laughs> church and um I think I made one or two friends there and when they learned about it they were very, very supportive. They were the support. Very, very supportive of me. You know, and we moved when we moved, um, we moved to an area and I am going to a Nigerian church now, but I would call that church home because it feels so comfortable. The pastor maybe because the pastor is a professional, he is very right. That would do it. He's very receptive, very understanding. I have known him from way back. Mm -hmm. And he knows some. I didn't go mm -hmm. in. But even in that church, mm -hmm. even in that church, minding my own business, JJJ, je, 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 somebody went to ask somebody else, hey, is Lola's divorce over? Because I don't see her husband in church with her. Ha! Church people! So you can see the receptive. <laughs> Yeah. But an incident happened. My son in his class, something happened, and he just started crying. Mm -hmm. And they asked him why, and he said he missed his dad. 
and mm, I think yeah. somebody said something that triggered something and they mm. came and talked with me and you know a lot of them were like the teachers I think two of the teachers were like wow we didn't even know that you're a single parent <laughs> you know that you carry this so well and well, you carry it yeah and I would say honestly I have a wonderful support system my support system is huge they are hmm. great and that lady that is going through that, please find a support system that will support you, encourage you. Not support system that will go behind you and say something else. But right. Support system that will support and encourage you. So is this end. is this safe to say? And feel free to answer how you want to answer. Is it safe to say that support system is most likely not a small Nigerian church with only twenty people in it? It is safe to say so. Ouch. <laughs> It is safe to say so. It's not me. She said it. <laughs> <laughs> we know them. <laughs> it, is, it is very safe to say so. It is very, very safe to say so. Yeah, find a support system. Find yeah. a, a real support system. Professionals, people that know how this works, they know not to be judgmental. Yeah. People that know that this is not about right or wrong. Yeah. People that know how to have some self-control because everybody wants a little gossip here and there. But like, can you control your damn self? Yes. Yes. You know, and honestly, that was one of the reasons why um, we both um, single again with LFP and back and have mm. the um, the Facebook page. The Facebook page is strictly for single again peoples. You, mm. you, there is no married person there that will judge you or criticize. What do you have a link to that that you can drop in the chat for me yeah, so I can sure. post it for anybody? Who, uh, because support system is it's great, you know. We're talking about finding love and finding strength again. Honestly, that's probably backwards. Because if you don't have your own strength, if you don't have enough self-esteem, self-love, self-respect, if you don't have those things in place, uh, you're probably going to drain yourself trying to find love. Yeah, it is actually single again with LFA and Bob on Facebook. C um, can you post the link? You have a direct link to it. Um. Oh, I can know. you say it again? I'll find it. Say it again. It Single again with LFA and Barb's. Single again with L LFA, and uh, LFA and Barb's. Who is Barb's? Uh, Barb is my co-presenter. We do it together. She's also single again. She's in London, so we okay. collaborate from London. Gotcha. All right. And, and, and Barb's. Because I want to post the link so it's easy for people to, those that might want, okay, I found it. Yes. Uh, those that might want to join, they can, you know, they can join you guys uh and we we'll definitely like to hear more about you know how the because this is all a journey right like to hear more about how the journey is going uh later on in the future some testimonials and stuff like that the journey from the beginning to the end <laughs> yeah 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 because again well this is about competence it's not about uh either your husband or your wife this is why we talked about Children are not being trained to become husband and wives. Probably also because uh, uh, the people that are trying to train them are still trying to figure it out. They're struggling. <laughs> and you, you, you're right about <laughs> you know. that. And because we look at it as, oh, they are still children. Oh, they are still children. No, you don't talk like that. You don't talk about sex. You don't talk about this. Eh. You don't talk about... No, please, talk about it. It's okay. Hmm. Yeah. When my daughter get to the age where we'll talk about how to satisfy your husband in bed, we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just have to know the times and the season, know the right time. Yeah, timing. About. Timing is a big deal. Yes. Yeah, timing is a big deal. You're teaching a boy to give. You're teaching a boy to protect. You're teaching, you're teaching that boy to protect. Like, you don't only protect people around you. You're protecting your family. This is how you do. Yes. My son is nine. He will say, I am the, I'm responsible for this house. I pay the bills in this house. I give you money to pay money. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching him to know that is your responsibility as a boy. So in about 11 years now, when somebody say 50-50, we're doing 50-50, he's going to be like, uh, you guys are weirdos. <laughs> he's going to be like, weirdos. You know, it's not to say that in households, people don't share responsibility depending on the situation. But from a mindset standpoint, mm -hmm. A, a, a man cannot afford to be competing with this woman. It just will never work. It mm. will never work. And if he, if he, if he, in the mindset knows that this is my responsibility to protect and provide, right? 
He also knows how to receive when it's a temporary situation or it's just that situation from a customized standpoint. Mm. He knows that, but he knows how to compensate for that at an emotional level. Right? And he will have a hard time running around um, uh, um, celebrating 50-50 with women in society. He will have a hard time saying that out loud. It just will be weird to him, even if that's the reality of the finances. But that's yeah. just finances, you yeah. know? But a lot of people, and we will keep saying it because we know it's hard to comprehend, but we will keep saying it, you know. Uh, not to say two families that were going head to head and my pastor asked them to separate and see if they could work things out. One is finally divorced. Wahala. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Sister Natsu, I got a lot of growing to do. That's why I love watching this channel. God help us. It. I love that because it's not about one person is right, the other person is wrong. It's about what can you take away from the situation so let me ask you this uh miss lola i asked her i said she has to pay for the name and then she goes uh no my wife has to pay for the name and yes, then said yes, uh, and then she said i said why and then she said um i think i'm older i said what do you mean you're older and then she goes to tell us i'm not going to tell her age but you look good for your age thank you, you. Know? So, so, my, my so, son, my children will say I'm 23. So, let's just say 23. How about that? You know, <laughs> so, and I was like, okay, you're right. She has to pay you. Okay, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm still expecting my payments. Okay, I'll tell her. I'll tell her. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of, uh, a lot, it, it, it's not going to be as simple as right and wrong. And even if the person is out, outrightly wrong, right at some point you have to hold yourself accountable and say how did i attract that for your own future and honestly i i, I always say this as mm -hmm. a couple do not be too proud to say i'm sorry mm. that is honestly anybody my children will say oh mommy knows how to say sorry and i teach my kids that well, why do you think some people struggle with saying i'm sorry why do you think it's, that i think it's pride and i think it's because i just want to prove a point yeah in relationship in marriage you don't mm. have to prove a point to anybody <sighs> we're on the you. same team same team I, we are on a team we're a team yeah player. so it is i am sorry mm -hmm. thank you thank you oh thank you is such a scarce thing in a marriage oh it, it's something that i i think honestly a lot of people that knows me know it doesn't cost me anything to say, okay, I'm sorry. Hmm. What, what do you do at some point where people say you're being manipulative? You say, I'm sorry all the time. Yeah, sometimes it could be manipulative, but sometimes you have to stand your ground. Hmm. And <clears throat> I think um, my baby's father started having a hard time when I started telling him that, look, I could say I'm sorry and sweep this under the carpet because that's what I always do. But mm. I am standing my ground now. Oh, there you go. I and, and I and I try to clarify if I did anything wrong, mm -hmm. I apologize for it. Mm. But I am not going to apologize for everything. But if you knew that you did something wrong, you wouldn't say if I did something oh, no. wrong. Oh no. Even before even before he said anything, I'll say, Okay, look, I, I just have to say this. I know I did something wrong. I mm. apologize. I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. You know, I put myself out there in lots in the relationship. Mm. And it was honestly one sided relationship. Mm. Yeah. You know, I say something here all the time, and it's a very bold statement. And I'm always open to the conversation because it's not a, it's never a one day conversation. What I usually say is that I think sorry. And most people's apology is sorry. I think it destroys more than it actually helps. But it depends. Context it depends. matters, right? Yes. Which is why I asked you the second layer of the question, you know, because some people, they just say, I'm sorry, because they want just to push to the on. issue under the rug. Yes. And the, the other person is... Just sorry, just to move on. Right. And right. I would say that I think most of the time, because I know... I don't know. I don't think I have the strength for for stress. I don't think I have the stress to be fighting and arguing and going back and forth. Wait, that you like that you like that you like soft life too? Is that what you're saying? No, look, I just 
please just let's live in peace <laughs> but let's communicate let's talk about communicate. what's happening let us iron it out mm. if we have to fight each other and shout and yell let's do it what was your it, let's move on what would your ideal next marriage husband what, what what does that look like don't give me a list just describe it what does that look like for you what that looks like for me is somebody that doesn't see me as a competitor mm. a communicator mm. somebody that see that sees himself as my champion mm. and will respect my enablement because i can be very enabling especially if i love someone mm. and respect it and not see it as me being foolish but one thing i'm not going to do is i'm not going to blow my boundaries mm, mm, i'm mm, going mm. to be very i would still say sorry mm -hmm. but i want you to see the reason why i'm saying sorry right and, and that and that's and that's a big deal like yes. not just sorry because i'm afraid this is going to become another issue yes but from a more yes. intentional place like i see how i've offended you yes yes and yes. Um, a very logical and critical place mm. and somebody that uses the word we mm. and not i hmm. ha, that one is difficult for indomi generation men good luck to them ah <laughs> We, no, I'm masculine. It's I. I are, run this household. <laughs> these are just simple etiquettes that we need to learn. Hmm. When you are in a team, it is us. Hmm. You cannot say, oh, I did it. No, we did it. If you can do that at your workplace, transfer mm -hmm. it to your home. We are a team. We are not competing against each other. Hmm. I don't want to get... I. I I, I tell people, even when I remember during the divorce, oh, um, you know how people are. Hey, it's us. I, I even told my lawyer, I don't want to have anything from him. I don't want to have anything to do with him. I don't look, I just want this over with. You just want be free. free. Mm, just want to be free. Right. Let me ask you this question. Uh, in reality, you don't have to pick one. But if you had to pick one, would you rather he be a partner or a leader? Both. I said in reality, I said pretend now, fantasize a little bit. If you had to pick one, <laughs> you had to pick one. If I have would to you, pick one. Mm -hmm. Would you rather he be a partner or a leader? I'd rather a partner. You'd rather he be a partner? Yeah. Because so no, if it's not, you, you can you can deal with it if it's not a leader. A partner will see you as an equal. We're on the same level. But a leader with a man that, with the kind of person that he is, mm -hmm. see you as a superior, so you have to bow for me. You have to bow. Well, that, that's that person. But in this next phase now, right, um, from everything you've described so far in this last two hours, I thought you would say a leader. I really thought you would say a leader. Uh, mm -hmm. Because leadership is one of the scarciest, uh, is that an English word? It's, it's a scarce commodity. We, we, part, we, 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 part, we partner by default. Hmm? Leadership is not scarce. Anybody can be a leader. No, can be, but it's not. Can be is different from is. Right? That's why I say it's not scarce. But to find a servant leader. Uh-huh. That is what is missing. So a servant leader will bring, one of the things he will bring to the table is partnership. A partner does not necessarily bring leadership to the table. No. And and I'm disagreeing with you, just so you and know. That's, no, I, I understand. Okay. I, right. I, I, and that was why with him, right. with my baby's father, I'd rather a partner than him. Oh, okay, with him, you, that's what no, you craved. No, you wanted somebody to, okay, okay. He, yeah. Because it was... He, from your description, it looks like somebody that was forcing leader, but they were not a leader, right? But when it comes to marriage and romantic partnership, uh, this is a very tricky one, you know? In reality, we don't have to pick one because by default, we are partners. Where the work comes in is 
teaching a man how to be a leader without needing to enforce it, right? And not and not um, resenting that he's being called a partner. Because some of them, when you say partner, like, oh, that's what's wrong with y'all. Uh, you want to be partner? No, you are a partner, you dumb dumb. <laughs> We're just saying that your leadership skills would have told you that you don't have to argue that with her. You don't have to compete with her. She, she's coming from a past situation where she craved a partner and she said, what I want is a partner. You don't have to over A leader would know not to overreact to that. A leader should be able to roll up their sleeve and get dirty with you. Yeah. Mm. A leader should be able to sit on the, in the mud with you. Yeah. And wipe that tears and tell you, okay, we got this. Mm. and not what are you going to do now we got this it's going to be all right you need someone that will reassure you effortlessly with his presence that it's going to be all right as opposed to him bringing the chaos yeah we, there's no way we could we could finish this conversation today um ladies and gentlemen of the prestige family do you want her to come back at some point <laughs> let me know it likes care hello my dear. hit that like button right now because this has been the best session we have in a long time. Much better than any you do it or make a aching nonsense. I beg, I beg, I beg. Hit that like button. Okay, we got our 21 likes. We're missing five likes. Hit that five likes right now. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. You want her to come back? They say yes. May, may, may I say yes. Yes, please. Uh, Black Diamond said, please do. You know, um... You know, having a conversation with you was effortless, you know. You. By no means was it an indication of how you showed up in a marriage, right? We don't know, right? But it's a good thing to know that, um, like you said earlier, you knew that was going to be your husband. Just because there was a divorce does not mean you still didn't know or yeah. God orchestrated it that way, you know, so you can also grow. Uh, to be a better person yes. for your yeah. children uh, in a weird twisted way potentially for him in the nearest future which is why you refuse to call him an ex yeah. uh, not to thank you so much for sponsoring the show I appreciate you for that thank you thank you thank you thank you I appreciate you for that uh, yeah mm. oh, ah! thank you not to thank you um everybody please go and support natu natu has a store also natu please send me some detail about the charity organization so i can put that here as well so i can also spread the word uh for the charity or the breast cancer charity organization uh we need to put that out there more thank you natu i appreciate you all right yeah so any last word for the prestige family where can they find you uh i want you to talk about uh, a mother's burden um um uh, single again with lfa and barb there's a third one i keep forgetting that one there's a third one right no oh that's the two okay tell them more about where they can find you well i can be found on instagram i am on youtube um a mother's body um raising multicultural children in the united states is on youtube it's a program that bore out of oh my goodness i have this kid what am i going to do do i bring them up as a nigerian or do i bring them up as an american and even me as the mother i'm still trying to inculcate the culture you mm. know and how do i balance it and that's on youtube um haven't posted in a minute but um we're cooking something on the background or at the background and um single again with lfa and bad is a podcast we really air every wednesday um, okay drops at noon every wednesday um please like share. is that on youtube or all the podcasts only podcast only so right like now. uh like where like i uh um, spotify apple spotify podcast, yes okay. wherever you listen to your podcast and um we have a Facebook page, like I mm -hmm. said, um, Single Again just started. We just finished season one. We're just mm -hmm. in season two. It's a new community on Facebook that we are building. This community of strong single again people. Okay. You know, we want you to come. Don't feel that you'll be judged. Share mm -hmm. your story. Ask us questions. Ask me questions how I'm going through it. I am still going through my divorce process. 
It is mm -hmm. not easy, and that's why I say it's not easy. But every day I celebrate it. Every day is a win that I am alive. I am on this side of, of the world. I'm not okay. on the other side. It's something for me to celebrate, and I have a reason. Let for me it. give you some smoke a little bit. <laughs> one of the... Um, one of the downsides I've heard about these types of groups is that misery loves company. They tend to be very negative, not yours, oh. but but some other groups. Um, there's, there's a group that became very popular at one point. I think it's called Females in Nigeria, Thin. Mm. A lot of divorcees, a lot of people that have gone through some terrible, terrible experience. You know, obviously they're looking for some type of healing, but it turns out to be something else. Some people actually leave because they, they feel like it's too toxic or too no, negative no 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 the thing with this group is what i i i when i talk on my podcast i don't come in from a professional standpoint i come in from this is me this is my personal experience this is what i'm going through mm -hmm. and for the group um like i said again i don't conduct gossip okay we come to that group to support each other provide resources Link resources lawyers that can help me link you to resources oh how do i go about this this is how we go through it how mm -hmm. do you do as a single mother raising these children and still going to work full time and mm -hmm. going to volleyball going to baseball going to scout or cops um, club all of those activities how do you manage it it is support and it is not just for men and women i've spoken with someone that says ah no i won't call you a broken woman but then so men can come in there for support as well men can come in there too because i know two men even okay. on that group that if you hear their story mm -hmm. you know, it's like ah mm -hmm. you know so it is not just for women that that is refreshing uh that that we've declared that you're not a gender warrior <laughs> that is refreshing would be for women but it's not just for women we get it we get it but at least if you can out, outspokenly say like no man can get support too yes. that is a big deal shout out to gracious greatness for the 20 pounds i appreciate you bro thank you thank you thank you I appreciate that, bro. Let's go to Marriott. Marriott says, I want to hear what life is like for her now post-divorce and what skills, characteristics she thinks helped her. Give us three things. Okay. First, God. Never stop praying. Never, Thank ever, 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 ever stop communicating with that man up there. Mm, God. Yeah. yeah. I would say support system support system i have a strong support network my friends mm. are friends that if i call them this night they would jump and be here i have a very good support system mm. in my friends in my children my daughter will tell me mommy i'm sorry i yelled at you i understand how if i am feeling this way i can understand how i can only imagine how you're feeling mm. so i yeah. have a very good support system yeah and that's lastly, good I would say me because I am you. a strong personality. That's what the S stand for, self. It wasn't support, it was self. This one is purpose. This is God, purpose, self. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. So I, I, I have to just pull myself by the bootstrape and like, hey, it has mm -hmm. happened, it has happened, no pity party, let's go. What can you do? You know, just, mm -hmm. just encourage yourself. David encouraged himself in the Lord. So yeah. encourage yourself and just you need you. Be positive. You need you because your mm. kids are looking up to you. Your friends yeah. are even seeing how you're managing it. People around are watching. So you have to encourage yourself. Yes, yes. Cool mama. Hello. Good to see you. Uh Natu says, I am Finn and the narrative is not right. Okay. Maybe Natu will come and tell us about Finn one day. That was the narrative I heard, you know. But you know, people exaggerate. But I would love to hear um you know if there's any if there's some kind of basketballs around thin narrative out there nigerian gets to that group i want to start judging and get upset for being banned thin is a safe space for women to air their grievances without being judged okay even Will just in Nigeria? yeah i think that's the thing yeah yeah but some people when you're airing your grievances um some people receive that as toxic 
it just depends on where everybody is standing right no i think the thing is if if you're in a group you want mm -hmm. to air agreements talk with the admin of that group the admin what if everybody so so if everybody's open to just post it there you can see how that can turn you left can right encourage other people you have to be careful when you're in a group you have to be careful because you don't mm. want to discourage other people some mm. people's situation are worse than mine mm. mine is worse than some other people i have grievances every other person has grievances mm -hmm. my grievances they want you to smile again don't mind them they just want you to smile again don't mind them <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, my grievances may hurt someone else. Mm -hmm. And someone else may think I am, I'm sharing my grievance, but they may think I am insulting or downgrading right. them without playing them. So that's why you talk with the admin. Like, right. hey, this is what I am observing, or this is what I'm experiencing. Can you address right. this in a way that will not, you know, um, upset everybody in the group? Right, absolutely. You know, that's why I love Clubhouse because there's a button at the top of Clubhouse conversations that say "leave quietly." If people's grievance, if you know the group where people are allowed to post their grievances, you can leave quietly too without taking an offense. It's a public space. At the end of the day, no matter how locked up it is, you know, people have to also, like you were saying, self self awareness, take responsibility for what you feed yourself. Yeah. And if you find yourself in the middle of a crisis, that is part of your responsibility to manage it, you know, it, yeah. uh, and, and not not turn around and say it is your fault. No, that's part of the problem. You keep saying it's everybody else's fault. No self-accountability. And one thing that was repetitive here today in terms of narrative about you, Miss Lola, is that the self-accountability is top notch. I've seen that a few times in the chat. So that that oh, is yeah. a, that is a big that is a big deal for us here. That. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing, for being vulnerable Thank enough to share. Me. Thank you so much. Uh, it was good. It was good. You know, it's not like I have bad guests, but it was good. You know, <laughs> but we had a we had a we had a brief conversation over the phone, and it made sense that we do something together because I know that people will learn a lot from it. So, and you delivered. And thank you so much. Thank and I look you. forward to your platform, our platform, growing bigger. Anywhere, anyhow, we can continue to collaborate. Yes. Please feel free to reach out. Because uh, right you. now, all indications, the Prestige family loves you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being on the show. And thank you to everybody out there. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Ola. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'll put you behind the stage. Hang on for one second while I okay. round the show. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, another one in the bag good one another and every now and then we'll do something nice like this you know you can take a little breather away from emeka ike and yula doche's drama you know but uh you know i will probably position them on friday saturdays and sundays because our regular shows are monday through thursday 5 p.m so uh we'll continue to work on your way out do me a favor hit that like button share subscribe and turn up your notifications so you are notified when we do go live i want to say a quick thank you to the sponsors of the show life with natu and gracious greatness who says i know go match you life with natu i appreciate uh all of you thank you so much uh hopefully you've been enlightened and educated i will see you on the next one peace your love that I've been missing I'm a saw your hugs, you're touching and kissing me Love on the floor, the couch in the kitchen One love enough, we done enough